Welcome to WCT. We are so excited that you are joining us for this reopening and we thank you for your support. Enjoy, Enjoy the show. Excuse me? Oh, hi. Do you have a second? Sure. Uh, you were just in that class, right? Yeah, I, I was on the other side of the room. I'm really having trouble with what he said. About love? Uh, duh, it's a course about love, so. Well, that part about, I don't know, it's all chemicals? Oh yeah, that'll take the romance right out of it, that's for sure. Really? That's so depressing. Oh. Men, what do you expect, right? It's like the ultimate rationale. It's just chemicals. I'll, uh, I'll call you when my dopamine level hits 50s. <laughs> you okay? I should have never taken this stupid class. I'm sorry, I, I just descended on you out of nowhere. I, I didn't mean to. No, no, it's kind of why I take these courses here. I, to meet people, I mean. You know, I, I didn't mean to pry. Yeah, I, I guess I'm here to meet people too. You know, I looked through the catalog, saw the course, what's love got to do with it? And figured, uh, you know, anybody who'd be interested, you get what I'm saying? Oh yeah, I mean, it can be a cold, lonely city, and how do you meet people, right? Exactly. And so I think anyone who wants to know about love, that might be an indication. God, I'm so messed up. You healing? Trying to. Broken heart? Yeah, this was so stupid. Maybe not. Uh, my name's Kim. Hi, Esme. Oh, I love that name. Yeah, my mom was really into J.D. Salinger. Oh, Did you know him? Yeah, so it would have been either Esme or Zoe, right? I think Phoebe was in the running at one point. That's great, love Salinger. <sighs> yeah. But what do you mean when you say you love Salinger? Oh, uh, it's just chemicals. <laughs> hey, so we both came here to meet people and we met people. Each other. Yeah. Yeah. You want to go get a cup of coffee and chat? Uh, yes and no. Oh, um, okay. I understand. You do? Well, that's a first if somebody understands me. Really? No, that was my sense of humor talking, which again, no one seems to ever really get. Uh, no, I don't drink coffee, but yes, I do like to talk, as you've probably noticed. Oh, oh well, I mean, forget it. If, if you don't drink coffee, then I have absolutely no interest in spending time with you. <laughs> oh, uh, I like coffee ice cream. No, you're talking. But it has to be Hagen dazs Oh, that goes without saying. <laughs> yep. There we go again, always saying what doesn't need to be said. Oh, no, I, I didn't mean it that way. <laughs> no, I'm sorry, I, there we go again. I'm always sinking into dark places, always making it about me. Even my saying I'm making it about me is making it about me. Whoa, <laughs> slow down. I, you, you really could use some haagen <laughs> <laughs> uh, I have an appointment this afternoon, uh, maybe some other time. I'm really glad we met. You're sweet. Uh, okay. Hey, um, so there's a case where you said something that needed to be said. We're making progress. And thanks so much for putting up with my yammering. Yammering? Things have been, well, meeting you. This has been such a gift to me. When you, you don't have anyone else to talk to? Or? Not anymore. So, I'll see you next week. Please say you'll be there, please. Oh, of, of course I will, I... Oh, great, that's great. So, um, bye. <sighs> come in, come in, don't knock, nobody knocks, just come in, it's open. Okay, uh, nobody knocks. Okay. Maybe you should go out again and, and come in without knocking. <laughs> Oh. <laughs> come in, come in! <laughs> totally different experience, right? The coming in, not knocking thing? It's totally. So look, um, I you don't like, like cats. Uh, yes. You have a cat. Yes. You want pictures? Uh. <laughs> And so I think anyone wants to know about love. Uh, oh, <laughs> yes. 
yes. Now I remember. Remember what? How much I hate kids. Oh. <laughs> uh, look, uh, so I, I work with Jake Schuyler. Ah, Jake, yes. Actually. Another knocker. But no cats, only migraines. Right. Um, so he told me that you gave him something that cured his headache, and it was amazing. The headache? No, the cure. Ah, uh, the bad, the bad, amazing cures. I have all the time, but an amazing headache. Oh, that's something to be savored. Oh, right. So um, he told me you have cures for all sorts of things. How would they know that? You told him? <laughs> and he believed me. <laughs> now I have to cure him of that. Okay. Um, so my name is Kim, and you can call me Zorina. You don't have to do that. <laughs> uh, is Zarina your first or last name? Well, it was my first, and I am thinking it will also be my last. I'm really glad you met. You're sweet. You have headaches. Yeah. But different from Jake's. Oh, I don't know. Well, his are genetic. With you, I'm not getting a good reading. Too much static. Wait. I'm sorry. But, but when I first walked in, you had this goofy accent. I know, I know. It's all an act. An uh -huh. act? If you want to sell people stuff to help them, why would you want to act so nutsy? No, no. What I'm doing now, this is an act. I actually am nutsy. <laughs> Although I prefer quaint. <laughs> Look, Kim. I have a gift. I can usually tell what's ailing people. Well, some ailments. Migraines are pretty common, but I'm having trouble identifying yours because there's something else going on that's interfering. What? What's going on? I can't tell. <laughs> Don't worry about it. I mean, really, would you rely on anything I told you? Let me suggest this. I have a powder. It's similar to the one I gave Jake, but it's a little more all-purpose, not as targeted. So it might not be as effective. Ah. Oh no! Wait, wait, wait! This is this is for panic. Oh, I'm so mad! I ordered these envelopes online. They all look alike. Yeah. Okay. Um. So, pretty much everything that's going on right now is freaking me out. Um. I mean, what's in these things? S suppose you had given me that panic packet by mistake and I had taken it. Are you panicked now? No, not panicked. Well, then if you had taken it, you would have a panic attack. <laughs> so you have a powder that causes panic? <laughs> Takes all the romance out of it when I have to explain. What I make are powders and potions that turn the body's chemistry around. So if you're uh, uh, panicking, this will stop it. It essentially flips a switch, the panic switch, but it's a stupid powder. It doesn't know if the switch is on or off. So if you take it and the switch is off, it will flip the switch to on. You want the sides. <clears throat> there are two key parts to the brain, the mind and the amygdala. Feelings, the way we sense things, Emotional responses, pleasure and pain, that's all controlled by the amygdala, which we inherited after hundreds of millions of years of evolution. And it still works the same way it does for the dinosaurs. Approach, avoid. And I have powders and potions that target that part of the brain and make it do whatever it isn't. Approach, avoid, headache on, headache off, comprende? So I should, what, wait until I already have the headache? Aw, she can be taught. <laughs> yes, make sure the switch is on before you turn it off. God, I can't believe I'm having this conversation. Okay, look, it, it worked for Jake. I'll try it. How much? Take it. See if it works, then come back to me. Meeting you has been such a gift to me. Okay, why? Well, I'm a healer. I like to know my healing's working. But more, I'm sensing something in you. There's a heat coming off of you. I want to check that out. It will be easier once you get your next headache out of the way. Heat? What, what kind of heat? Exactly. That's what I want to check out. I'm not feeling anything. Really? You strike me as someone who feels everything. 
look, um, let me just pay you for this. If it works, you're going to want to come back for another packet. If it doesn't, why pay for it? <laughs> okay, I guess. Right. Okay. Oh, sh wait, wait, wait. This is very, very important. What? Don't bring your cat. Ow, ow. <laughs> Huh? No, no Hagen does here, I'm afraid. That's okay. Mm. I've always wondered about these guys. Big gay ice cream. Yeah. Uh, such a long line. Yeah. You should try their shakes. Oh, OMG, Nutella strawberry? Mm -hmm. Have I not gotten this far in life without trying one of those? Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know. Mm -hmm. Um, so, I thought that class was much better this time, didn't you? Oh, God, yes. Put the romance back into it. <laughs> you know, every time I listen to him, well, okay, it's not him, it's, it's what he talks about. Right, I know. I, I keep thinking, yeah, that's me. But then, maybe not? <laughs> because my relationships have never really been about, like, the passion. Exactly. I love it. I love feeling it. Ditto. But that metaphor, just, it captured it perfectly. An ice cube and lemonade. Eventually it's gonna melt. Yeah, and then what are you left with? Diluted lemonade that's nowhere near as sweet or as lemony as you want it to be. And eventually not even as cold as you want it to be. Which was the purpose of the ice cube in the first place. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, every time that's happened to me, which is pretty much every relationship I've ever been in, I feel lost. You're like, where did the passion go? I want it back. Where did it go? I want it back. Yeah, um, maybe I'm presuming too much, um, but we've gotten pretty friendly. I don't want to pry if it's too painful oh, for you. no, God, no. You mean Glenn, right? Glenn? Glenn, that's where my mind goes with all this, Glenn. Oh, okay, that's the guy that broke your heart. Yeah. No, wait, guy? Uh, Glenn's a woman. I thought you knew that, but that's dumb. How could you know? Oh, yeah. I, I guess I did wonder. And now I know. Um, so, um, what happened? I mean, only if you want to talk about it. Oh, yeah. I, I really do, but I felt it would... I never know what people are comfortable with, and if I talk about it, I'm going to start to cry, and I don't want to dump that on you. Oh, please. For me, it only makes me feel closer to someone when they're willing to open up, right? Okay. But I have to warn you, when I open up, we met a couple years ago. There was a wellness retreat. Glenn was a Tai Chi instructor. And I was smitten. Pretty much at first sight. Do you believe that could happen? Love at first sight? Oh, yeah. So, you know, I got there mid-afternoon. It was raining and everybody rushed to their cabins. As I did, I saw this woman in the woods with the rain coming down, moving so incredibly gracefully, like dancing in slow motion. Eventually, as the exercise came to the end, she stopped and looked straight at me and beckoned me over, and I came. I didn't make the decision to move. My body just went. I didn't know what was going to happen. And that made me nervous, and so I started babbling about how beautiful it was in the rain and all. When I get nervous, I just talk and talk. And I noticed. God, I'm sorry. Oh, no, no, no. I, that's why I'm here. I, I, I love listening to you. Anyway, eventually she reached out a hand like it was a Tai Chi gesture. And she started to show me a few basic exercises. The rain was caressing us, and it, it was magic. She stopped and she gently brushed my drenched hair out of my face, and the next thing you know, we're making love right there in the woods, in the rain. And for the past two years, I felt so taken care of, so nurtured, so loved. So what happened? I don't know, and that's what's killing me. I came home one night, she, we lived in our apartment in Chelsea, and she said, I love you, Esme. 
I'm sure you know that. God, I remember every word. I've never met anyone like you, but I'm not in love with you. And I don't know if I ever was. Oh, honey, is that all she said? Yeah, I mean, after she said that, I didn't hear anything else. And she just packed up her stuff and left. I haven't heard from her in like, what is it, three months? So I warned you. I can't tell you how special it makes me feel that, that you would be willing to share that with me. <laughs> Believe me, I, I can totally relate to what you're going through. Someone broke your heart? I mean, you can tell me if you want. You listen to me. Uh, that, that's okay. Yes. Some other times. Mm. Okay. Do you remember what that guy said in class about rejection? Who? Oh, in class. Oh, that creepy old guy with the ponytail and the Iron Maiden t-shirt? <laughs> yeah, I, I think he's sweet. That sweet, creepy old guy with the ponytail and the Iron Maiden t-shirt? Yeah. I don't know. Oh, anyway, he said when his wife left him and broke his heart, he realized that she was the only person in the world that could ever make him feel whole again. Oh, yeah. I do remember that. What a depressing thought. But it's true. No, I, I, I don't agree. There is someone else. Who can make you feel whole? Who? You. Um. You just walk in, you don't knock? <laughs> you told me not to knock last time. And you do what I tell you? <sighs> Look, um, I'm in a bit of a hurry, so if we could dispense with the wacky stuff and let me speak to the other you. This is the other me, I already told you that. If I was your cat, would you say dog okay, me out? That thing <laughs> last time really worked. I mean, my symptoms were much less severe. It was over in like 10 minutes. So if you We can do better than that. If only I wasn't getting all this interference. You got something else going on, maybe heart problems? Okay, you're really scaring me. No, I don't have heart problems. Unless you count heartache. Heartache? Some guy dump you? Uh, no, no, some guy didn't dump me. But the headache. That should tie you over. <laughs> we'll deal with the headache later. Wow. H how did you do that? That that was incredible. Thank you. It, I don't get it. If you can do that and, and you've got these powders, and there are so many people out there suffering. Why not make it public so you can help them? <laughs> Life should be so easy. They have to find their way to me or someone like me. That's the only way any of this stuff works. You're losing me. <laughs> you should be so lucky. <laughs> All right, now that smart aleck remark about heartache. Is that for real? Yeah, it's for real. But no guy dumped you. No, it's, uh, it's more in the nature of unrequited love. So some guy you love doesn't love you back. Woman. <laughs> some woman you love doesn't love you back. Yes, some woman I love doesn't love me back. Where did it go? I want it back. Okay, wow, heavy. Either this woman is Helen of Troy or you've been shipwrecked for 20 years. But the heat coming off of you is intense. Yeah. I mean, I feel like my face is a neon sign. Just, I love you, I love you. I don't get why she doesn't see it. You haven't told her how you feel? No, that would just ruin everything. <laughs> it would? You'd be worse off than you are now? Oh, I have a history. I, I meet someone, lose control, obsess over them. Ah, 
That's what the heat is. Limerence. What? Limerence. If it's any consolation to know that what you got has a name, it's limerence. Never heard of it. Limerence, a state of uh, infatuation and obsession with another person that involves an all-consuming passion and intrusive thoughts. That's what the books say. So how is that different from falling in love? It's falling in love with the feeling of falling in love, not with the person. Well, whatever it is, she doesn't have it for me, that's for sure. She doesn't love me, I know that. Okay, you know that. And I know you don't have a packet to cure that. Don't be ridiculous. A packet to cure unrequited love. I mean, really. Right. <laughs> it's a potion. <laughs> right. Well, is that the face you made when Jake told you about the headache powder? Okay, I bought into the headache powder because it worked on Jake, but that's physical. This is love we're talking about. You can't have a cure for that. <laughs> because love isn't physical. <laughs> Look, what's this woman's name? Esme. Esme. All right, if you don't want to tell me her real name, we'll use her husband. <laughs> Does she even know you exist? Of course, we're friends, close friends. Well, getting there, close friends. So how does she feel about you? She likes me, could even love you, right? Platonically, maybe. Platonic, what does that mean, love without sex? So you don't need a potion to get her to love you. You've got that already. You know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you should never assume that. <laughs> but what you want is for her to desire you. Desire me? Well, you desire her, right, sexually? Yeah. And if she reciprocated, voila, you've got the whole package. So you've got some potion that will make her desire me, some aphrodisiac? No, that's one and done. You want more than that. A love potion is more or less permanent. It works. This is the prime directive of the brain. You meet someone. Approach, avoid. However your lady feels about you, this will flip the switch. Yeah? Yeah. Maybe some other time. Um, look, how much for what you did before? That was really incredible. No, I don't charge for incredible. But you do need another packet. That headache is only in temporary remission. And Kim, remember. Oh, um, wait until I already have the headache. Got it, thanks. So, so how much for this? You have to let me pay you something. I work on barter. You take that, and in return, you take this. The love potion. You don't have to use it, but having it with you will give you options that you don't have now. I can't believe I'm doing this. My belief is highly overrated. In a perfect world, you would tell what's-her-face how you feel about her. <laughs> and, um, well, but you're right. That won't heal you, and that's what I do or try to do. Having this with you will get you what you want. Yeah, but getting what you want isn't the same as being healed. Unless what you want is to get healed. Whatever, I can't go on this way. <laughs> Just remember how these things work. Flipping the switch. If she already desires you, this will turn it off. She doesn't. You seem pretty sure about her feelings. I hope you're just as sure about your own. I don't know if I understood what he was saying about free will. Which part? Well, he said we treasure our freedom so much, our independence, that we've gone to jail or fought wars for it. Right. But then we give it all up for love? Is that what he was saying? I mean, Honestly, sometimes I think I'm too dumb for this class. Oh, Esme, you don't really believe that, do you? Sometimes. Well, you don't feel that way when we're talking. No. Well, maybe a little. You're really smart. Oh, I'm older than you, and I, I know some things, I guess. But I feel like, for the most part, we communicate really well. We understand each other mostly. Yeah, definitely. I don't know what I'm saying. This, this is just a tough day for me. Your birthday? How did you know? Facebook? Oh, mm. of course, duh. You don't like celebrating your birthday? I used to. 
But what does that mean, really, giving up your freedom for love? Well, if I could talk about Glenn. I guess you loved her. And it sounds like you let her be in charge. Yeah, but that's what I always do. Let your partner lead? Yeah. So I think what he's saying there is that you don't make choices for yourself in those situations. You either let Glenn make the choices or you choose things you knew would please her. Yeah, that's pretty much it. So what happens to free will? Get what I'm saying? No, I get it. it it's just so complicated. I mean, when you love someone, you want to please them. And that's a choice, right? Definitely, definitely. You want to please them. But even that wasn't enough. No, but you can do better than Glenn. You deserve better. That is why I brought this. Oh my god. Happy birthday, Esme. Oh my god, how did you know? Facebook. <laughs> Facebook? Yeah, um, something about how your dad <clears throat> used to... Um, oh, that, that post must be five years old. Yeah, well, I've got a lot of time on my hands, so... Oh, uh, but thank <clears throat> you, thank you. Wait, this is the real thing. Mm -hmm. uh, how did you find it? Isn't it banned? Oh, uh, not sure. It, it was hard to find, but... Um, <sighs> Have you ever had it? No. Ah, uh, absinthe. Hmm. It's been so long. Do you want to try it? That was kind of the idea. A, a birthday toast. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Great. Oh, wow. Um, just a minute. Wait. Wait until <laughs> my sister sees this. Okay, hold it up next to your face. Smile. I've told her so much about you. You have? That's so great. You know, Franny sees this. <laughs> I, I only have um, paper cups. us now and to what we will become. I love you, Kim. I wish I was in love with you. You're the kind of woman that I should be with, that I need to be with. The kind of woman that would let me be me. I guess you can't really control who you love or who you want or who loves you. To us. Wait. Um, this is a um, tradition my grandmother taught me. Um, when two friends drink, they uh, exchange glasses uh, to show that their souls are uh, interchangeable. <laughs> That's so sweet. Uh -huh. Happy birthday, Esme. My gift to you. I'll miss you, sweetheart. Wait, wait, uh, you're supposed to sip it? <laughs> Are you okay? Yeah, I am. Man, that shit is potent. <laughs> Well, isn't that just fucking great? That's you out there? That's me, all over the fucking highway. What happened? Eh, ah, some dickhead farmer in the fog. Didn't see him. You going too fast? Yeah, it certainly was. <laughs> guess I'm dead. You guess, you're all over the highway. <laughs> <laughs> so, where are we now? What the fuck is this? Oh, the Hereafter Cafe. I mean, we used to call it just plain Hereafter, but they thought the Hereafter Cafe gave it a more down-home touch. Who's they? 
Well, who knows? I mean, I've got my ideas. Everybody's got ideas, but nobody really knows. Well, nothing like I thought the hair after would be. Well, take it or leave it. This is it. Would you like a coffee? Sure. How about you? No, thanks. I don't like coffee. What are you doing? Am I being your coffee? What's the point of real food? We can't eat it. <laughs> yeah, I guess. But still. You know, just when things were starting to break for me, too. A shitty time to get killed. I was going to a callback for a movie. The Cohen Brothers. You seen The Big Lebowski? You're an actor! Or I guess I mean you are an actor. Well, I'm trying to be, or was trying to be. You know, it's tough. Or was tough. You know, fuck it. You know, it's pretty weak coffee, by the way. <laughs> I get that a lot. Aren't you gonna watch them put you in the ambulance? Yeah, what's the point? I'm dead. What about you? No, thanks. I don't like bodies. So last chance to see yourself. Hey, did you know that once they put your body in the ambulance, it technically becomes a hearse? No, didn't know that. Nice conversation starter. <laughs> well, it certainly went fast. Well, you said you were speeding. No, I meant my life. It went so fast. I mean, I, I never really figured anything out. No one ever figures it out. What about the old ones? Same with them. <laughs> Something's wrong. I have to go back. It's okay, it happens sometimes. <laughs> they so, want me back. That guy must have gotten with those paddles on the way to the hospital brought you back around. <laughs> what about all this? Uh, you won't remember. Go on before they change their mind. <laughs> go on. <laughs> Good luck. No! See you, man. What about me? Oh no, you're you're totally dead. <laughs> done and fucking done. For you, it's over. I, I can't believe this. I mean, I I never accomplished anything. Yeah, you'll get used to it. As they say, it might not be fair, but it's final. <laughs> You're upset. I, I, it did. One minute you're bombing along, the next minute they're loading you into a hearse. You'll get over it. They always do. It. You know what? I'll tell you what. How about I mind you your favorite meal? Just tell me what you like and I'll mind it right up. Sort uh -huh. of a welcome to the hereafter sort of thing. Yeah, I'm not hungry. How about an omelet? Never had a mind omelet till you've had one of mine. I'm, I'm allergic to eggs. These are mine. <laughs> I, I'm super fucking allergic. I mean, I probably mime a reaction. <laughs> you know, they, getting killed really fucks things up. Ah, it's good old shit for brains. Nice going, shithead. Let me guess. Farmer and the fog. Same one. <laughs> Farmer and the fog. And where are we now? The Hereafter. The Hereafter Cafe. I'll be damned. Oh, maybe not. You gotta stay positive. <laughs> well, it's going to a baseball game this afternoon. A kid's pitching nine year old with a fastball you wouldn't believe. Playing Centerville. That as I was, until Shipper Brains took me out. <laughs> well, what were you doing out on the highway in the fog? That was a fucking Miss City boy. A right miss at that. You ever seen the fog? First off, you can't see shit out there. And now I got you to deal with, and you're too dumb to pour piss out of your boot. Can I get an amen on that? Plus, I have the lights on. Can you believe this clown? Make it out like it's my fault. <laughs> too dumb to pour the piss out of your boot. What a dick. You see me one coming out like a bat out of hell. He was excited. He had an audition. I was going to a callback for the Cohen brothers. Huh. The Big Lebowski guys. <laughs> you know I might live out here in the sticks, but I've seen The Big Lebowski about 10 times. I got the DVD. Who'd you play? 
I wasn't in it. Didn't he just say he was in the Big Lebowski? I said I was going to a callback for the guys that made the Big Lebowski. The Coen brothers. Would you like a cup of coffee? I guess. And I'm pretty sure the Coen brothers wouldn't wipe their ass with a guy like you. Why am I cussing so fucking much? Oh, residual anger. We all have it, even me. See, profanity helps you blow off some of the stress you built up over the fucked up life you just lived. You know, risks you should have taken but didn't, person you should have married but didn't, person you shouldn't have married but did. Opportunities wasted, shit like that. See, this is your only chance to get rid of it, so make the most of it. Cuss up a blue streak because you do not want to bring it into your next life. Fact, give this a try. Say fuck. Fuck. There now, feel better? Nope. Okay, let's try a little faster. Fuck, fuck. Fuck, fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. <laughs> there you go, feel any better? Nope. Oh, I gotta say, that's not good. Got a lot of work to do. It's gonna take some time, but keep it up. What's this? <laughs> what the fuck is this? What the fuck is this? <laughs> Better. <laughs> Coffee, I mind it. Oh, we don't eat real food at the hereafter. Well, fuck that. Oh, jeez. This is terrible. She said she fucking mind it. Can't you mind some fucking sugar to go with it? <laughs> I get a lot of complaints. <laughs> I've had shitty coffee, but this shit really blows. Will you try and mind me to cup pepper breath? Hey, sorry. I'm just pissed off. It's okay. You got killed. You'll be pissed off for a while. Got killed? Man, oh man. Got shit for brains to thank for that. <laughs> what brain said it all this afternoon? Some kid pitching I wanted to see. Your son. I have a son? Oh, wow. Quicker than usual. That's <laughs> good. What's quicker? You. You're forgetting already. See, this is the hardest time when you still have memories of your life. And um, <clears throat> by the way, your son will forget too. Forget what? You. I, I mean, I forget you entirely, but he'll move on with his life. Who are you? <laughs> sort of an angel, I guess. A welcoming angel. Maybe even an archangel. I mean, that's what I'm shooting for. I don't have an actual title. You know, I've been here a long fucking time, too. Wouldn't you think they'd give me a fucking title? Mm -hmm. It wouldn't cost them anything. <sighs> oh. All right, guys, you stay right here. I'll be right back. What's wrong? My fucking nose keeps falling off. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this stuff kind of grows on you. So this is the here after. I thought it'd be different. The waterfall, rainbow, shit like that. Maybe a few of those fucking cherubs floating around. <laughs> Where'd you get that idea? Berkeley. Classic literature of the Renaissance. Four credits. You don't seem the type. A breath requirement. My jocks are class on easy A. And it turned out to be pretty interesting. <sighs> okay, so I want to ask you something. Be brutal, because I really want to know. How do I look? The truth. Dead? Dead in hell. You know, when I was alive, the boys used to say, you're looking fine, Cassie. I love when they said that. Yeah, okay, I guess I could see why they'd say that. Really? Like, you're, you're not just saying that? How about you? Still look dead to me. <laughs> Not bad exactly, but really, really dead. <laughs> Isn't there some way I can get the fuck out of here? Not till you're reassigned. You know what I like to say to all the newbies? What? Yes. Oh, for shit's sake, how do you expect me to guess what you like to say to all the fucking newbies? Of all the cafes in all the world, you stumbled into mine. From the movie Casablanca, Humphrey Bogart. I'll try the big Alaska. Oh, over my dead fucking body. Okay, so before you got here, I told him I would mime him his favorite meal as a special treat. But he picks baked Alaska? 
First of all, baked Alaska, pretty fucking tricky to mine. And on top of that, it's nobody's favorite meal. So you pick something a little easier. How about a nice bowl of fucking oatmeal? <laughs> all right, what's your favorite meal? I don't care. I'm not hungry. All right, what the fuck? I'll give it a go, but I'm telling you up front not to expect too much. Baked Alaska, totally rich to mine. It's even easier to 3D it, you know what I mean? Just bake it for real. Look, I'm sorry I fucking ordered it. It's okay. I will give it a try. Yeah, well, fuck it. Where'd you say we are? The hereafter. You see, you're starting to lose it too. This is how it happens. Lose what? Your connection to before. They're wiping it. What do you mean? Like when he was talking about his son, pitching against Centerville. Remember, I'm talking about his son pitching. Now what are you talking about? Your son pitching against Centerville. I have a son? <laughs> or remember the Big Lebowski, all that talk about the Big Lebowski? His son's the Big Lebowski? Oh, for fuck's sake. <laughs> he had a callback for a part. You know what? Forget it. It's good you guys are forgetting. Means they're getting you ready for another run at it. Run at what? Wife? Who's getting them ready? I don't know, but I heard they're gonna keep doing it till someone gets it right. This and everything, it's pretty fucked up. Oh, well, come on, you don't wanna drag all these memories into your next life, do you? We gotta purge this shit, leave it here. What about my son? Well, by now he is way down the road. We can't go looking for him. I mean, think how fucked up that would be. Little kid showing up claiming to be your dad. Huh. Oh, and he hasn't played ball since he fucked up his shoulder. Oh, and his wife is cheating on him. Is that late for what? Huh. So go on, right through that door. I thought life was fucked up, <laughs> but this event is really fucked up. Why if I ask a question? in there? <laughs> More life? Another chance to fuck it up? Uh, but don't pay any attention to me. This fucking nose has me bummed. I, I really gotta stay more positive. Okay. What if you get it right this time? Wouldn't that be something? So go on. They're waiting for you and you do not want to piss them off. This is way too fucked up. <laughs> fuck, 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 yes! fuck! Yes, that's good. Leave that shit here. Fuck, 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 fuck. That's my boy. <laughs> what about me? Ah, uh, they'll get you. How about this? I mind you a uh, milkshake while you're waiting. What's your favorite flavor? Is this my life? Really? I mean, really? Sure, I got it all. A Lexus, a job that pays me more than I'm worth. Nice suits, clean underwear. <laughs> That's more than most people got, you know? But something's got to happen. It's my time. And who is this? Oh my God, she's beautiful. Let me catch my breath. Let me gaze upon this splendorous being. I can barely look at her. It's like the sun, moon, and stars are shining in my eyes all at once, blinding me. I'm hypnotized, mesmerized. This is not a human being. This is an angel, a saint, a Venus, a goddess so magnificent that words have not yet been invented to describe this, this creature. Do you know who she is? I thought I know everyone in this town. I don't need to see a menu. I always know what I want. She knows what she wants. I love that. Do you have the time? I've misplaced my diamond encrusted 14 karat gold Rolex with a ruby glass. <laughs> Not that I'm worried. I have two more at home just like it. She's got backup boxes. She's like a Boy Scout, always prepared. What's more perfect can anyone be? I'd like a drink, please. A drink? She drinks. It gets better, doesn't it? I like it strong. Even better. With no ice. Jackpot. A sloppy sex on the beach. Extra vodka. With a twist. Thank you, Lord! <laughs> Earl, I'm in love. She's a vision, an angel in motion. She's sure of herself. I've dreamed of meeting a woman like this my whole life, even as a young boy, in the dark, under the covers when I take my hand. What? Well, uh, hold on, buddy. 
Actually, let me rephrase that. Stop and think. Nobody's perfect. I'm telling you, nobody. She is, I swear. Not a pimple, not a blemish, and she loves me. How do you know that? What did the two of you talk about? Nothing, really. But that doesn't matter. What are you basing this love on? Skin as smooth as cream, eyes that catch the light, lips like scarlet ornaments. The clincher was a drink order. Sloppy sex on the beat, straw, no ice, a twist. That's not a lot to go on. It tells me everything I need to know. Look, I knew I was gonna meet a woman like this my whole life. And my life changed the minute she walked into the room. My life changed the moment you walked into the room. Remember me from the other night? You asked me the time? Did I? Yes, I remember. You looked at me and flooded your long, gorgeous lashes and asked, do you have the time? Time is illogical and elusive. Somebody millions of years ago decided to make a minute 60 seconds and an hour 60 minutes. It's nonsense. Now we base everything we do, every dream we have, on time. Time is meaningless, except for those who make an hourly wage and want to make sure they get their fill of birthday cake once a year. If we took away time, then time would not pass, and you would not have missed me, and we'd spend day after day in this dreary bar, even if we work together and only see the sun when we feel like it. Life's longing would disappear, and all that would remain would be love, pure and simple, without time to measure it or prove its existence. How about a drink? Sure. Will it be a sloppy sex on the beach, strong, no ice, with a twist? No. Give me a liquid Viagra with an extra splash of <laughs> Coming right up. Listen, I love what you just said about time. I, I totally agree. Do you? So what did I say? Well, you said that time, that time is like a day with many minutes, and that people should make more than minimum wage, and that birthday cake would be healthier, but didn't have so much sugar. I think you missed the point. <laughs> I love you. Maybe not. We already understand each other. It's like we've known each other our entire lives. She doesn't even have to say anything, and I know what she's thinking. It's almost scary. So what's her name? Why does that matter? A rose by any other name would smell just as sweet, wouldn't it? Depends on what kind of menorah you're using. <laughs> Listen, Bill, I'm worried about you. We used to get together and talk about cars and football. And you meet this no-name broad, and she's got your brains all screwed up. You're spewing all this poetic shit. Creamy skin and eyes like Christmas balls. It's creamy skin and lips like scarlet ornaments. If you're gonna quote me, get it right. <laughs> Look, I'm no Shakespeare. Do you know what it's like to love somebody so much that you're consumed? I mean, you go about your day and can't think of anyone or anything else but that person. Other people's words sound like a foreign language and blah, blah, blah. But you're gonna understand her as clear as a bell, even if she's not right there with you. Somehow her sweet voice just if you're hearing voices in the fog, you need to get your ears checked. While you're at it, you might as well get your head checked, too. There's nothing to check. I found perfection. And her name is, it's, well, she's perfect. You're perfect, do you know that? Am I? Yes, beyond perfect. You must look in the mirror every morning and be enraptured by your reflection. I'm enraptured just being in your space, smelling your smells, hearing your intake and outtake of breath. I take in all of you, piece of you, from the tiny goosebumps on your arms to the, to the, is that a warp on your lip? You're a funny little man. And I think, <laughs> yes it is. And there's a hair growing out of it. That reminds me, I'm thirsty. Buy me a drink. Sure, what will it be, a sloppy sex, Viagra? Get me a hair of the dog, four dashes of Tabasco and an extra chili pepper slice. Lots of crushed ice. That, that sounds kind of fierce. I can take it. I don't doubt you can, listen. I find you irresistible. It's like this magnetic force keeps bringing us together. We could be millions of miles away from each other with the GPS yelling, recalculating, recalculating, yet somehow, someway, we just find each other and come together. We're one, you and I. I can feel your being, perceive your senses, and read your thoughts. So what am I thinking right now? Right now? Right now. Well, by reading your thoughts, I meant it in a figurative sense, not a literal one. Cop out. Wait. Give me a clue. I'll tell you what I'm thinking. I'm thinking I'm really thirsty and I wish I had that damn drink. Ah, see, that's exactly what I thought you were thinking. Do you know why? Well, <clears throat> because I'd only just said it a minute ago, dumbass. <laughs> Your frustration with me makes my cheeks blush like the first flower of spring. <laughs> and my hands tremble like a schoolboy anticipating his first kiss. See, you're more captivating, more alluring than I could have ever imagined. You are love personified. 
except for the wart, without flaws or faults. <laughs> Your physical precision, except for the wart, fulfills my fantasies. Your magnificence, except for the wart, is like a glorious <laughs> oil portrait of unequaled splendor. It would take a mere drop of liquid white out to mask that wart and bring it back to the physical perfection I admired the first time I laid eyes on you. <laughs> you see, all you would need be is, ooh, ooh, I'm sorry, <laughs> did I do that? I, I didn't mean to do that. I couldn't do that to someone I love so much. Don't sweat it. Fortunately, you stepped on my club foot. It's okay. <laughs> club foot? Yeah, do you want to see it? Okay, she has a wart with the hair, but it's a light colored hair. And a club foot you wouldn't know about because she wears socks and shoes. Finally, the fat rises to the top. <laughs> so uh, what else is wrong with her that she hasn't confessed to yet? See, that's it. Those are the only two imperfections that could go wrong with the human body. Both are fixable. If I place the tip of my pinky finger on her lip, then the wart disappears. If I steer clear of buying her sandals for Christmas, then the club foot disappears. I have the other 98 perfect percent of her to enjoy and worship. So what is her name? Why is that so important? Because it's the first piece of information we want when we meet someone. We start with the name and we go from there. It's the first thing our parents think about when we're born. It's the first square on the game board. Instead, you're focusing on all this stupid crap, the surface crap. You gotta dig deeper, man. Every hairy ward or club foot has a person attached to it. Uh, was she made fun of as a kid because of her foot? Uh, how did that affect her later in life? That's the conversation you need to have. It'll give you more information than focusing on her, her drink order, or her creamy eyes and wet skin. <laughs> so tell me about your club foot. What do you want to know? It's creamy skin and eyes that catch the light. Whatever. <laughs> you don't have to talk about it if it's a sensitive subject. Doesn't bother me a bit. Hide anything from anybody. Ask. Well, did kids make fun of you because of your foot? Sure, kids will be kids. That won't change. Their jokes must have hurt you. Harry, do you remember the horrible things they said to you? Did you cry? I didn't cry a drop. I wouldn't waste tears on those idiots. All it took was one creepy kid to say something to me, and I broke his jaw. A lot of them saw what I did and never bothered me. Some of them even bought me lunch in the school cafeteria. I don't take anybody's shit. Besides, they know I own a couple of Rolexes. Hey, I need a drink. Right, sure, anything. Uh, what do you feel like? Some Pepto-Bismol, shaken, not stirred. Pepto-Bismol? For my bad stomach. Bad stomach? Yeah. Is that a temporary condition? No, it's genetic, runs in my family. <clears throat> I believe that someday medical science will have discovered some sort of mechanical plastic stomach that functions a whole lot better than what we have now. <laughs> and it'll be so routine that we'll be able to buy it at Target. So now she has a bad stomach. I wouldn't call it bad exactly. And it bothers her when? Only when she eats, drinks, or breathes. Listen, it's not as bad as it sounds. It sounds to me like you're giving me a bunch of crap here, Bill. There's a lot more to this than what you're telling me right now. I think I've run out of excuses, Earl. There are flaws to find out about. She's got a scar under one ear. She snorts when she's mad. It just scratches her thigh every so often. Oh yeah, that thigh thing could be a real game changer. <laughs> so, so what's the next step with uh, Miss Noni? I guess I'm not as sure as I was a week ago. I think I still love her, but the defects are just piling up. <laughs> Why is reality so cruel? Why can't everything and everybody be as perfect as Alexis? Is that what you think perfection is, uh -huh. Alexis? Well, yeah, come on, Earl, think of it. A brand new Lexus, a brand new car smell, purring engine, Everybody looking at you as you drive by, it's the best. Yeah, kind of reminds me of when I had that uh, brand new Mustang my senior year in high school, you remember that? Yeah, see, now you know what I'm talking about. You were so happy to run around in that thing. That was your baby, man, and you watched your watch it every chance you got. And then? What do you mean? Well, it didn't last, did it? Well, it got beat up a little. A little? Some fucking jock dented the bumper and an ex-girlfriend keyed the passenger side door. Then the battery died and the oil leak started. And that wasn't the end of it. Remember that time I, I blew a, t a tire on the turnpike? I ended up crashing against a guardrail. Sobbed my guts out that night. Couldn't sleep. To anybody else, it would have been a piece of crap. But you got it all fixed up. Yeah, but the flaws were still there under the surface. But, but that doesn't matter, don't you see? There was one morning I was driving my little sister to the roller rink and we were stopped at a red light and she was having trouble breathing. 
I knew I had to get rid of the doctor, so I slammed my foot against the accelerator. I raced to the hospital, the oil light blinking all the way. I didn't think we'd make it, but we did. She did. All because of that car with all the fucking defects. So I should trade in my Lexus for a Ford Mustang. You're an <laughs> asshole. Listen, uh, you want to go grab a drink? Nah, I think I'll just hang out here. Your choice. Hello. Hello yourself. My name's Earl, and you are? Lady. You are ugly, you know that? Seriously ugly. Yes, I know. I have a wart, a club foot, and a bad stomach. Get me a drink. You are fascinating. A sloppy sex on the beach. Anytime. Strong, no ice. I'm sure you are. Extra vodka. Extra vodka. With a twist. With a twist. Bartender, make that too. <laughs> Scratch away, but your mother warned you that scratching only makes it worse. So, until the next train comes, you'll hear me. <laughs> You've only got twelve and a half minutes. The sun won't even come up by then. Yes, you, you will. You with the stiletto heels and the leopard clutch. Oh, they, they think you're the first in the office because you're so eager and efficient, but they don't know that you can't wait to get out of the house every morning as fast as you can. And, and you, 50-something Princeton frat boy, oh, you're such a go-getter, but you've forgotten what you're getting and where you're going to. And, and then there's you. Well, you don't have a choice. You, you have to punch in early because you're relieving the graveyard shift. To all of you, it matters. See, that's, that's the important part, the essential part. It, it, it matters. It, it matters. It matters. It matters. <laughs> Pop those two words deep into your brain and, and just let them bake into your mind and, and then into your heart and then finally into your bones. It matters. Because if it doesn't, you've got a, a vacuum, a, a black hole, an, an abyss, and, and you can't wrap your hands or your, or your mind or your heart or your breath around it. It's, it's amorphous. Robert came home a couple of hours ago. Well, everyone calls him Bob, but I prefer to call people by their proper name, the name they were baptized with, because, well, in case God's listening, it's best to use a name he'll recognize. So, mm -hmm. see, Robert's the man who, you know, whom I live with. I took a big risk taking him in. Section 8 housing has very strict rules about allowing a companion in, and, and the inspectors, well, they, they show up without warning. See, I, I couldn't let that stop me. He's, he's the man I fell for, and who fell for me? We used to just, um, just eat each other's faces up in, in one gulp. See, that's, that's how hungry we were. Mm. So when he came home today, his breath reeking. I said to him, Robert, do you know what time it is? I mean, do you have the faintest idea what time it is? Well, it was 4.16 a.m. And, and he just he just looks at me with this blazed look in his eyes and, and a kind of smirk in his eyes and on his lips, and he says, it don't matter. 
It don't matter none, none at all. <laughs> Look, first you need to know that Robert is not some dumb redneck, okay? He knows to say, it doesn't matter, not it don't matter. He, he does it despite me because he knows it makes me I, I, I admit I can go overboard sometimes. So, like when my, my friend Loretta says, friend and me went for a drive, I, I try to hold it in. Mm -hmm. But uh, 10 to 1, it's going to just blurt out, just, it's, it's friend and I. It's friend and I. <laughs> so, uh, and she'll just look at me and roll her eyes and say, whatever. <laughs> oh. I, I should also add that I am. Um, currently taking uh, English literature and intro to world philosophy classes online. And, and I belong to wordoftheday.com, so um, oh, wait, sorry, I'm doing it again. Robert says I do it all the time. I, I do have a circuitous way of telling a story. So, so I look at him and I say, it very much does matter, Robert. It certainly does matter because you're just being so in your face about it and, and that's just brutal and very inconsiderate of my feelings. I mean, I, I've been up all night worrying, picturing you under some car, blood just gushing from your belly, oozing from your skull and in the car, a, a mass of hot metal. And, well, that's just not something that you do this another person. It's just not something you do at all. And he just looks at me and he, he says it again. It don't matter. I, I know what you're thinking. I mean, why, why do I put up with this? But, but you're also thinking you know, she's way past her prime and off her meds and lucky to have any man at all. I, I know I'm not stupid or naive. You have no idea what meds I am or am not on. <laughs> but it wasn't always like this. You never saw love turn sour. It's, it's like um, it's like old milk. It, it, it curls and it, it's it smells so bad. It just makes your stomach lurch into your throat. So I look at him and I say, it matters. Trust matters, fidelity matters, love matters, Robert. And he just, he just shakes his head and, and he chuckles as he walks past me into the bedroom, muttering under his breath, it don't matter, over and over. It don't matter, it don't matter, it don't matter, until it starts to, sound like a song, you know, that has a kind of lilt to it, which, which doesn't make any sense because when you think of a lilt, you think of something happy and, and light, not vicious and, and mocking. He, he slams the bedroom door behind him. It's too hard, it, it doesn't shut, it pops right back open, and, and then he falls into the bed. <clears throat> and, uh, and I start to feel the jitters coming on. So I, uh, I take some deep breaths and, and then I go to make myself a, a cup of mint tea. And I'm standing over the stove putting a tea bag in my favorite mug. It's, it's one he bought me at a fair. Yeah, it has half a heart on it and his has the other half. You know, so when you bring them together, it makes a whole heart. And then, and then he screams. He, he is swearing up and down, and, and then, then I hear these loud hissing noises from Flannery. Oh, oh, um, Flannery's my cat. He, um, <laughs> I named her after Flannery O'Connor, the writer. She's one of my favorites forever. To, to, well, she, she writes about <laughs> loathsome people, like um, serial killers, but yeah, um, there, there is a point to it. Which is um, it's, uh, finding grace in, in unlikely places. Do you have a cat? Yes? You too? Well, this, uh, 
this next part might be hard to hear. See, Flannery is, is pouncing and, and tugging at the covers, and, and her paws are starting to scratch Robert. She used to do that when she'd see us in bed, so that's why I always left the bedroom door locked. But uh, he is trying to fling her off like a wet rag, but she's holding on. She's, she's not playing. She's holding on for dear life. And, and so I, I race in, and I say, calm down, Robert. Just calm yourself. I'll, I'll take her out. And, but though I came in to make things better, I, I'm only exacerbating the situation because as mad as he is at Flannery, seeing me and the chance to get my goat is, is simply irresistible. So he yells, you don't own me. And then he gives me a look. Mean. It's right mean. And then he does it. See, I, I don't know if he planned it or if it's something that just came to him, but just like that, he, he does it and, it. and it happens so fast, I can't do a lame thing to stop it. In fact, I can't even breathe. He, he grabs Flannery by the scruff of her neck and he slams her against the wall and she yells! And then very, very oddly, her forearms just go out on either side of her while the, the rest of her just stretches out in front. And then she looks at me one last time with those big green eyes. And then she just slides down the wall crumples into a black heap, like a blue trash bag. But she, she, she lands right next to the pine chest of drawers my mother gave me. It's, it's one I keep my lingerie and Christmas and birthday cards in. And in, a, and in an instant, it, it's over. And Robert? He just, he just yells a great yellow growl. It don't matter! I don't scream or cry. I just, I walk back into the kitchen. The kettle is, is whistling. It's, it's, loud and shrill enough to make a body wince, so I, I shut it off and I grab it by the handle and I walk back into the bedroom and I stand over the bed. And Robert has fallen back asleep. This time he is O-U-T out. S still, I keep one hand hidden behind me back holding the kettle just in case he stirs. And I say, now hear this, Robert. It matters. What you did matters. Everything else is just existential claptrap. And maybe it's OK for great writers and philosophers to say all is nothingness. But frankly, though you're a relatively smart guy, if you take a national average, and you are skilled at fitting new bathtub skins over old ones, so people can feel better about who they are or sell their house for more money. You are definitely no Jean Paul Sartre. So you're not entitled. You're just like the rest of us. Just another working class human being who couldn't possibly make a cogent argument as to why it doesn't matter. So you have to live with the fact that it does matter. And if you imagine that it doesn't, if you think you can play God and take life into your hands, that you have the right to destroy, to willfully and cruelly destroy a, a beautiful, gentle, kind, living creature, simply at your whim. Well, if, if you believe that, and then you act on that belief. Well, then you'll just have to suffer the consequences. Robert is snoring when I release the spout and pour the entire pot of boiling water all over his face. He, he screams. 
and he, and he swears and he tears at his skin, which is now a bright shade of crimson, and, and he tries to shield his eyes and then, and then tear them out of their sockets. And, and I just walk back to the kitchen. I put the kettle on the stove and, and I leave. I'm here now because it's important that all of you hear this so that you know, so that you never forget. It matters. Every little bit of life matters and none of us is better than anyone or anything and none of us has the right to do what Robert did. So there you have it. I, uh, I do have to get back now. You know, he'll be, he'll be needing me to nurture him. Patience, <laughs> TLC. Oh, it was such a terrible and unfortunate accident. Damn it. Of course I'll tell them everything. I'll, I'll tell them how... He was so drunk, he didn't know what he was doing when he grabbed the kettle by the handle and, I mean, naturally, he can't remember a thing. Will they believe me? Who, who's gonna tell them otherwise? You? <laughs> you? Why, you don't even see. Oh my God, you have to see this. Hello. You need to stay for at least 10 minutes. Okay. Specific. Cheers. <laughs> You not to come in here without me. Did you get my video? <clears throat> Whatever. It looks so real from here. Right? Amazing. Yeah, not sure I'd say amazing. Where'd you get that? It's wine? Yep, her. Oh, cool. I read about this. Bartender. Life has no meaning. Each of us has meaning and we bring it to life. It is a waste to be asking the question when you are the answer. Joseph Campbell, those are quotes? I guess, a bunch of stuff. Give me another one. 
I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them feel. Maya Angelou. Show off. Here. Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> Do you ever think about- Wait. Listen, shifting, breathing, realistic. Cool. Do I ever think about what? Like about how nothing's real except for what you think is real? Like what you actually see, nothing else. Like how they say a baby, like a baby sees you, but if you turn a corner or go behind a door or something, the baby thinks you're gone. Like gone like you don't even exist anymore. Yeah, sometimes. It's kind of, it's more That's about, why babies like peekaboo. Right. They make me feel judged. Like I'm supposed to be fun or entertaining or something. You put too much pressure on yourself. Maybe. Okay, if you had to or I gave you a freebie or something, which one would you have sex with? <laughs> Her. You just love your white women, don't you? Not accurate. <laughs> They're mostly white. Most everyone I know is white. It's a numbers game, environmental. So don't flatter yourself. <laughs> it's like if they don't see us, we're not here. It's like Westworld. Eventually, this kind of art will be as realistic as Westworld. Is she the artist? Her? The bartender? No, the bartender's part of the piece. She's like them. She works like Alexa or Siri. You call her bartender. Bartender, tell us about the artist. Artist is Oliver Cassidy. Born 1967, died 2013, suicide direct result of a broken heart. FYI, for the full effect, you need to stay for at least 10 minutes. I didn't, I never prompted her. She came over to me and offered me a drink. I never said bartender. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. Yes, you did. No, I did not. Your boyfriend likes it. <laughs> Why would she say that? The things I say are mostly true but sometimes not true. In that respect, I'm exactly like every person everyone's ever met, ever. This is just weird, stupid. Just sit down and take it in, okay? Give it a chance, be open. Are you part of this? No. I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, cheers. They don't see us. We're not here. Excuse me? Oh, that's what you said. It's like if they don't see us, we're not here. I like that. <laughs> if we don't see them, they're not there. <laughs> oh, um, from what I read online, the bartender is a provocateur. So, I don't worry about all that. It's part of the show. It's not really a show, per se. It's an art piece. I was born in Kansas City with a penis. <laughs> Things are different now. <laughs> Provocateur! <laughs> so, are you an actress or a robot? Why, yes I am. May I speak privately with your boyfriend? No! <laughs> <laughs> the 
then what I'm about to say is for all to hear, but directed at you. Someone is here. Someone special. That person is listening, really listening, watching. Everyone else is acting. They're pretending, not really listening. They're performers, that's what they do. The special person really listens. Do you understand? I think. Say something that's on your mind, out loud. Say something meaningful to the special person who listens. Right now, use the mic. Um, we, am I that person? The special person? Could be. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <clears throat> To the special person, if you are indeed out there, you'll get this. I think you relate. So, hello. I was in the park recently and I was walking around the track and these guys were playing soccer. And there's a big field in the center of the track and there was a bad kick, like off target and the ball rolled off the field. and rolled toward me and I went to stop it with my foot, <laughs> like this. And it bounced off and I run after it. And a couple of boop boop kicks back towards the game and I, I get myself lined up. And I wait for a woman who's running laps to pass between me and the field so I don't hit her. And then boom, I give it a nice big kick back. Nice and accurate. And the ball rolls onto the field perfect. Nobody said anything. Nobody waved at me or anything, nothing. And uh, I kept walking. And as I'm walking around the track, I started thinking about common decency in the last presidential election and whether or not- Wait, what? What? How did you get the ball? They gave you the ball? <laughs> Someone kicked the ball off the field. There was a bad kick. Why do you care about stuff like that? What, decency? Nobody said thank you, for you. <laughs> that doesn't bother you? No, you wanna be thanked for everything you do? Yes, Jenna, that's exactly what I'm saying here. I wanna be thanked for everything I do. Whatever, the audience is staring at you. They look bored. Feels like they're staring at me. <laughs> <laughs> well, now they are. <laughs> Maybe you're bored with your boyfriend and you're projecting that boredom onto the audience. Remember, not everything I say is true. <laughs> she has no right to be bored with me. I'm not bored. Oh, well, you would know, I guess. <laughs> you wear those glasses for attention. You date admiring for attention. You date me for attention. Jenna, wait. They didn't stay for at least 10 minutes. <laughs> they didn't get the full effect. How about you? Are you boring? <laughs> no, I don't think so. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> I didn't used to think so. Everyone has the same dream, you know. At least once, usually lots more than once. The unprepared dream. You have to make a speech or sing a song or give a presentation, but you're not prepared. You have no idea what you're supposed to say, and sometimes you're naked. <laughs> you can't wake up. You have to do it. No matter what it is, you have to try. So, try. <laughs> Would you like to try? Honestly, I'd rather not, whatever it is. <laughs> but I suppose I should. Uh, that's why I'm here. Pick a number between 3 and 116. 
100. You're a stand-up comedian. <laughs> You're on in five, four, three, <laughs> two. <laughs> Action. Uh, <coughs> okay. Uh, do or not do, right? There is no try. <laughs> Where are my Star Wars people? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Hi, is, is everyone having a good time? <laughs> okay. Uh, hi. Um, uh, uh, my name is Lauren, and I'm a first-time stand-up comedian, and uh, this is my first time. <laughs> yeah. So, oh god. Okay. I'm going to, okay, I'm going to step into this dream and not be afraid and not try. Okay, I'm going to try. Uh, so, I am going to announce my age, <laughs> because uh, I, I don't care anymore if people know how old I am, because we're all getting older, right? So, it, it's just silly to pretend otherwise. So, I am 48. <laughs> yeah, there. And you know what? I am angry. Yeah. And I'm depressed. And, and they say comedy comes from pain, so I am going to put myself out here and be funny, because you know what? I'm in pain. Yeah. Because my partner just left me for a young girl. Oh, one that looked a lot like that young girl that was just here. Yeah, Little Miss Eye Roll. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. You saw it with her pretty face and that cute hair and those glasses and, oh, that hip outfit, right? Oh, God, and those perky tits. Do you see those? Like, they're cute, 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 cute. <laughs> like, I, and I don't. <laughs> you know what? It doesn't even concern me that none of you are laughing because, yeah, what can I do? So, but, but, the bios and and all the comedians bomb the first time when they just start out they, they just bomb <laughs> and so I am bombing <laughs> yeah. and I'm okay with that <laughs> and I'm okay that I'm 48 and I am trying really hard to be okay going places by myself because I am not a shut-in. No. I go out. I came here. I go to other galleries. I go to movies by myself. And I eat alone. She didn't stay for at least two weeks. <laughs> She didn't get the full effect. <laughs> Are you real? Bartender? Are you real? The only person who's real is the one your boyfriend spoke to from the mic. That person's perspective is the only perspective. Whatever.
you know who you are. <laughs> please, don't be pompous about it, and please don't be sad about it either. Existing all by yourself, caught up in your own mind, Everything is, it's all perspective. The world does indeed revolve around you. So, enjoy the show while it lasts. Oh, I thought of a joke. <laughs> can, can I do it? How long is the joke? Oh, like uh, 20 seconds. <laughs> Go for it. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, so Maya Angelo is sitting on this tree branch with a bald eagle. And Maya turns to the eagle and says, I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. So the eagle farts and slaps Maya's face and says, How'd that feel, bitch?